There's a famous quote by G.K. Chesterton. He's an author uh, who said, Journalism largely consists of saying, Lord Jones is dead to people who never knew Lord Jones was alive. And I always like that quote. Um, it's it kind of humorous because it kind of speaks to journalism where, you know, the news of the day is that this person has died who was really significant, but yet most people don't remember who he was or don't know it. And so today I want to talk about obituary writing, and that mainly is telling people that someone has died to, you know, people who never knew he lived. Now, um, as an example of this, I mean, I've written a few obituaries in my day, and when I speak about obituaries, I don't want you to think of, like, the free obituaries you see in the paper. Not free. Um, the paid obituaries you see in the paper, like, you know, in the back it'll say, like, so-and-so, service times, that type of information. Um, that is a form of obituaries, but what I'm talking about is like free obits that a news reporter writes, not the family, and the reporter writes it because the person was of some significance in the community. Um, sometimes small papers, sometimes even big papers will do obituaries on people who were not necessarily famous or big, but they are doing it kind of as a chance to, you know, kind of spotlight ordinary people and, you know, their contribution, not necessarily feeling the need to, uh, uh, to focus on only people who have, you know, been big public figures. So, but my point though today is that, you know, I mean, I remember one time is about kind of this idea of, you know, obituaries me about people that oftentimes people don't even realize were alive. Um, you know, I can, I can think of a couple of obituaries I wrote. I remember one time um, we were kind of looking for stuff. It was kind of a slow news day, slow news week, and I was working on a Sunday and uh, there was an obituary came in and said the guy who used to be in charge of uh, Central Illinois Lighting Company, which was one of these small independent utilities, used to be there was like Central Illinois Public Service, CIPS, and that was kind of in my hometown. There was Illinois Power, which was Decatur and Champaign, and then there was Central Illinois Lighting Company, Silco, which was up near Peoria. And so there were these different independents, and eventually Ameren bought them all, and now then they became like Ameren Silco, Ameren IP, Ameren CIPS, and then eventually they just became Ameren Illinois. But my whole point in all that is, is this guy had been the CEO of the Central Illinois Lighting Company at one point. And he died, and it came in, there was an obit for him, and so they wanted, you know, they said, well, let's do a story on it. You know, we're kind of slow on news, let's do it. So I called around, tried to figure out, you know, people who might know him, some of the organizations. I called the, uh, you know, the current uh, CEO of the company and uh, the current uh, flack, you know, head flack for the company, things like that, and was trying to get information on him. No idea who he was. Most people in Peoria probably had no idea who he was. Ended up, though... He had been a big part of a committee that had helped to uh, modernize and update downtown Peoria. And so he kind of had a big influence on that. And he had ended up getting one of the reporters at the time for the Peoria paper to leave that and head that group. And uh, and he ended up, uh, that guy ended up running for state representative or state senator. And he was currently serving. And so I ended up interviewing him. And so it was kind of a fun uh, story as you kind of work your way in and find out more about the guy. And at the end of the day, I mean, here's a guy that, you know, I'm writing a story about how he died, and most people never even knew he was alive. But the point of an obit is to basically tell people about somebody who is influential. And a lot of people, times people think of obits as uh, macabre or, you know, kind of like, eh, you know, like, do I really want to do obits? You know, like, it's all about death. Well, first of all, you know, Obits, we're talking about the kind that are in the paper that are, that are uh, you know, free, that they write because these are significant figures in the community. And second of all, these are not about their death. These are not stories about how they died. That maybe will be information that you would want to include, but that's not the point of it. If suppose you were doing a story about, you know, so-and-so being shot and killed, and you decided to do an obit on them, the fact that they were shot and killed might be in the obit, but it would not be the lead. It would not be the main information. There would be a news story about the person being killed, and then there would be an obit about the person who died. And those are two separate things. And an obit at the end of the day is not about the person's death. It's about their life. It's, about, it's a story of the person's life. It's basically a short bio of why this person was significant, why we want to look at them, why we're, we're paying attention to them. And so they're not really... Uh, anti-life they're really kind of pro-life because they're all about their life 
And one of the things about obituaries is obituaries are extremely well-read articles in newspapers that typically, you know, one of the, if you, if you talk to people like who, like subscribe to large newspapers, like the New York Times, uh, New Chicago Tribune, you know, larger papers, they will, even a small paper where they're paid obits, one of the biggest, most well-read sections, ones that places what people will pay attention to are the obits. As a matter of fact, my brother, who, uh, you know, just lives in Chicago, reads paper, not, does, doesn't work in journalism or anything, he, he owns a property management company, um, he will tell me, like, the obits is, like, his favorite section of the paper, because it's always these people who just did weird things, like the guy who invented the paper clip, or, you know, somebody who, you know, uh, created some modern technology that everybody uses and nobody thinks about who did it, um, somebody who wrote a song that, you know, was popular during a certain time, and... You know, basically it gives you a glimpse into a person who you may not even have even thought about living, and now you're getting their story. And that's what makes them kind of fun and interesting. People like to read about it. They like to hear about their lives. And it gives you a chance to kind of reflect upon them. And so they're, 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 they're very well read. And if you want to read stories that are well read, which I think everybody, I mean, I think anybody who wants to be a writer wants their stuff to be read. They want to have an impact. They want people to see what they did. They want people to pay attention to what they're doing. And if that's what you're looking to do, then obits are a great thing to do. I mean, they're, they're one of these things you should, you know, everybody will probably end up doing a few in their day. And they're also something that are very going to be very well read. Of all the articles in a paper, they will be some of the most read. And as, just sort of giving an example of this, I mean, the New York Times, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send out some links here in a little bit of stories that... Um, that, you know, are, you know, like some obits that I want you guys to read. Um, and the reason I want you to read them is so that you will have a uh, a better under, or, you know, so you can kind of see how they're written. And I'll send some from the New York Times. I'll send some from some other places. But you read these and you see, you know, kind of what they're doing. But, um, uh, you know, like I'm just pulling up the New York Times uh, page right now. They have uh, Casey Coleman, five, head of the Nobel Prize Committee, dies at 65. Okay, might be an interesting story about a lady who, you know, she's not a Nobel Prize winner, but she's in charge of the committee. I assume she's not a prize winner. Uh, Richard, Sh Richard Schickel, critic and filmmaker, uh, you know, 37 books. Um, Dick Brun, author of Miffy Books. Uh, Churkin, Russia's UN ambassador. I mean, so some of these are people who maybe are even aren't even that big of a thing. Michael Novak, Catholic scholar. Uh, you know, you know, there's just some of the ones that are on the front. Um... And uh, the uh, the reason I bring this up is, I mean, these are people who, you know, maybe kind of just, just on the fringes of things you're familiar with, things you know about, and, you know, there's an obit on them. And usually they're very interesting. They're very interesting about their lives. There's a uh, news source I regularly get, and it is, um, I was just looking for it because I was going to mention it. Um, that there was this, there's this little newsletter I get every week with kind of strange news, and at the bottom they always have this thing called uh, called um, honorary and subscribe, and the honorary and subscribe goes to somebody who <clears throat> basically died that week, who would typically be overlooked by the mainstream press and gives a short obit on them, and uh, like for example, like the one for the week that I'm making this is a guy named uh, actor. Uh, Actor Jack uh, Lord, who died, he was an actor, uh, and then there, oh, I'm sorry, that was the one who got it started in 1998, but, you know, there might be somebody who invents, like, uh, you know, like, like the person who invented email, or somebody who invented, uh, or who, who, the guy who put the at sign in emails, like, so, like, Timothy.McKenzie at llcc.edu there was a guy who was in charge of that like one week he spotlighted him and usually it's these people who you don't even realize existed and yet they have a significant story and so it's interesting to read they're usually very well read and at the end of the day even though you didn't know they existed after you read an obit if it does a good job you kind of think hmm that might have been nice to have known that person and i think that's the goal of that and i can tell you um you know i i mean there's some very uh, interesting people, very interesting things, and that's what an obituary does.